Welcome to GCK King's Circle with Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumoi. Hello friends and welcome to another exciting episode of the GCK King Circle, a place where faith and inspiration meets. Your host for today is Victor Amos and my co-host is Undubezi Esther. In today's episode of the GCK King Circle, we'll be exploring the practical proof of true revival. Yes, that's right. We're privileged to have the renowned Dr. W.F. Kumwe, a visionary leader and spiritual mentor, guiding us on this journey as our convener. His wisdom and insight has inspired countless lives. We are honored to have him. Yes, that's true. And our guest music minister will be bringing us music that will inspire and uplift our heart. So please, let's welcome him with an open heart. Oh, how I love him. Do you love him tonight? How I adore him. My breath, my sunshine, my own. The great creator. Welcome back. That was so lifting. Now let's listen to our inspirational transformer as it gives us the word. In Psalm 85 verse 6, will thou not revive us again? That thy people may rejoice in thee, show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. And this is the practical proof of revival. When sinners are coming in and they are getting saved and they are being convicted of their sins and they are falling on their faces saying, the Lord is here indeed. When people come into our midst during our worship, during our Bible study, during our revival time, and then they cannot go away committing the same sins they were committing before. That's the practical proof we're in a stage of true spiritual revival. And when these people are giving their lives to the Lord and they're living righteous lives, the grace of God is becoming abundant in their lives. It says in verse 8, I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. When there's interest in hearing the word of God, that's, that's when we have true revival. And when we were very early, you know, like in those days, people are coming to the Bible study and they are running. And they are running to the Bible study or they are running to the place of worship. And, uh, you know, they will stay till the end of the service and then they will pray and pray their hearts out. And without anybody telling them, pray this way pray this way, they just, they just open their hearts and it's like spring of water coming from their hearts and pouring out unto the Lord. That's a stage of revival when the people have this immeasurable interest, this unsurpassable interest, and this deep interest, and this great interest in hearing the word of the Lord. I will hear what God, the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again unto folly. You know, when the people of God, when they hate the foolishness of sin, the foolishness of the world, and the things that are childish, and the things that are not spiritual, they hate the things that are carnal. When you find everybody just interested in spiritual matters, and spiritual things and we're not interested in worldliness carnality and foolishness that's revival that's the practical proof that the lord the god of revival has come into our midst and the lord has sent the fire of revival upon his people verse 9 surely his salvation is near it's near them that fear him when the fear of the lord grieves our mind and like joseph when the wife of potiphar tells us to do something our husband may not be there. Our own father, mother may not be there. Our counselor, mentor may not be there. And the people that know us and cherish us and love us may not be there. But when the fear of God is in our heart, and we can say like Joseph, no, I cannot do that, I fear God. Because even though your husband is not here, Almighty God is here. I cannot do this and sin against my God. 
when that fear of God is in every heart, everyone that comes over here to worship with us, and that's revival. Because it says, surely, the salvation of the Lord is near them that fear him. That the glory may dwell in our land. When we see the glory of God on one another, on each face, that's, uh, that's revival. In verse 10, mercy and truth are met together. Mercy and truth. When mercy becomes evident in our fellowship, and truth becomes central, essential in our fellowship. Not mercy without truth, that's sentimental. Not truth without mercy, that's dry. That's dry. But when mercy and truth come together in our fellowship, we're merciful and we're truthful and we're truth loving. And then righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Again, righteousness and peace. Not just peace. Not just peace. You know, there are people that want peace at all costs. Peace and unrighteousness. Peace and backsliding. Peace and worldliness. Peace and carnality. And you know, they say, why don't you just leave that alone? Leave all this doctrine alone for the sake of peace. And leave all the righteousness alone for the sake of peace. And leave all this demanding lifestyle of holiness and sanctification alone because of peace. Let's just have peace. Let the people backslide. Let the people sin. Let the people do evil. But you know, if you just keep quiet at all those things, people are going to have peace. And don't you want peace? Yes, you want peace. Peace and righteousness. Now, and not just righteousness without peace. You know, there are people that say, I don't care about peace, all I want is righteousness. Can you be righteous without following the Prince of Peace? It's both together in a state of revival. There will be mercy and truth joined together in the state at the time of revival. There will be righteousness and peace. They have kissed one another. And then he tells us in verse 12, Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good. You find blessings overflowing. Even without our praying too much on healing, people getting healed without even centralizing all our messages on healing. People getting delivered, people getting provided for without, you know, asking and fasting and fasting and fasting. Oh, God bless us. Oh, God do this. Oh, God do that. All those blessings will be there in a state of revival. And then he tells us in that verse 13, And our land shall yield our increase. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. That's the proof that we have revival. We will have revival. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all these sons that are up and praying, Oh Lord, forgive all their sins in Jesus' name. Renew their lives. Touch their lives. Transform them that they'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. All those bad things they've done before, forgive every one of them in Jesus' name. Touch their lives and make them totally new, totally renewed in the Lord in Jesus' name. Perfect your work in them. I thank you, Lord, because I know it's done. Their sins are forgiven. Now they are saved, they are born again. Confirm it, O oh Lord, in their hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Wow, that was an eye opener. In a nutshell, the practical proof of true revival is when sinners are coming to the church, repenting from their sin, and having a deep hunger for the word of God. That's right. When everyone is consigned with spiritual things, not carnality, that's revival. When we have the fear of God in our hearts, that's revival. When we see the glory of God on one and other, that's revival. Thank you for joining us in this journey of faith. But don't forget that there must be mercy and truth, peace and righteousness, and blessings in all its forms where there is true revival. Join us tomorrow as we explore more stories on true revival. Until then, bye. We believe that you've been impacted. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui will love to hear from you. Please visit our social media platforms and don't forget to join us on the next episode of GCK King Circle.